globally 26,000 terawatt hours of electricity is produced every year. Around 3% of that comes from solar energy, up from basically zero just 10 years ago. In this video we will cover the explosion in solar power across the globe in the last decade and visualize it on a world map. We start our journey in 1989, when the United States first produced 0.1 terawatt hours of electricity from solar power. We mark nations with production between 0.1 and 1 terawatt hours with a silver marker. The US was joined by Japan and later Germany on this scale, with Japan becoming the first to pass 1 terawatt hour in 2003. We mark every terawatt hours produced with an orange marker. Germany followed two years later and was the leading producer of solar energy all the way up until 2015, when it was finally passed by the US and China. Many nations have ramped up its production during the second decade of the 21st century, and today 40 nations produce more than 1 terawatt hours yearly. 13 nations produce more than 10 terawatt hours, and the leading producers include Japan, India and Germany but they are trailed by the two largest producers in the world. While the production has been ramped up significantly in the US in the last decade, almost by a factor of four from 2014 to 2019, the production in China has exploded by a factor of 10 during the same five year period. Today, China produces 223 terawatt hours of solar energy to the US's 108. The world's production passed 100 terawatt hours in 2012, 500 in 2018, and over 700 in 2019. The price of solar power installations and production has decreased fast. And it is for many nations an economically valid choice when compared not only to other renewables and nuclear power, but also to previously cheap fossil alternatives. Solar energy has become a green popular investment in a time when climate changes gain news coverage. Both in the form of small individual solar panel investments and in the form of large scale state sponsored solar parks. While solar energy provides many advantages to traditional alternatives like coal and natural gas, it is also battling environmental problems on its own. Solar power is most efficient in large parks, and depending on location, these can demand a great impact in the natural landscape. They can be much like wind power plants, a problem for already troubled large birds, and while locating them into seemingly empty desert landscapes might reduce the need for change in land use, it does not make it zero. Solar energy also demands a great deal of steel, cement and glass to operate, and the extraction and production of these materials demand mining and produce greenhouse gas emissions. The lifespan of individual panels might not be more than a couple of decades, and it is unclear as to how well these will be recycled, partly kicking the problem to future generations. Solar is, by definition, most efficient in sunny geographical areas, and is hence not a solution for all nations. Proposals have been made for building large-scale grids connecting, for example, wind and hydro energy in Europe with the huge untapped potential for solar energy in Northern Africa. But these fail to consider how far we are today from an infrastructure that could support a fraction of the transcontinental transferring of electricity that would be needed. And this points to the other problem with renewable sources like solar and wind. It does in almost all circumstances demand storage of power from times when output is high but demand low to times when demand is high and output low. It isn't windy all the time and the sun does not shine at its strongest when energy demands tend to be at its peak. Some solutions for this have been suggested alongside of course the ever-expanding battery industry but it has so far failed to provide solutions that will make renewable sources a feasible alternative to 100% of the energy production. Ironically, it also works better alongside fossil energy production, which has a higher potential of ramping up and slowing down production, with peaks and dips in renewable outputs, an ability that nuclear power does not have to the same extent. It is easier to ramp up a coal plant when the sun goes down 
than it is to ramp up nuclear power production with the same short notice. Solar power can, in a way not possible with wind and hydropower, be a personal investment and with that make the individual a net contributor to the energy market. And this is not to be counted for nothing. In many ways, energy production is in the eyes of the public best placed out of sight and out of thought for everyone. But with economic incentives for the individual to bring energy production to one's own roof, the acceptance and understanding of the electricity grid and the need for energy production could go up. Many projections put the solar energy at a sizable share of the global production in 2050. And there is no doubt that solar energy will be a cheap alternative for a change towards lowering emissions in the future. But a discussion into how its downsides can be lessened by other energy sources alongside solar and wind will create a more stable and affordable electricity production. Thank you so much for watching this short introduction into solar power. I have other videos on similar topics you might find interesting. You can see them featured on the screen towards the end of the video.